Hey guys, in this video I wanted to work through some practice problems related to aromatic substitution reactions and the synthesis of substituted benzenes. And here we're looking at both electrophilic aromatic substitution and nucleophilic aromatic substitution. And we'll talk a little bit about how to tell the difference, when to use the two in synthesis, and that kind of thing. And this is based on LTQ 4.1 in the spring 2024 semester. So the first question is simply to predict the major neutral organic product of each of these reactions. And in the first case here, we've got nitric acid and sulfuric acid together. These two will combine to produce the nitronium cation, NO2+, and that's a fantastic electrophile. So we're looking at electrophilic aromatic substitution here. And we've got a benzene substrate that's already substituted with two groups. We have this isopropyl group right here, two methyl groups attached to a CH, and then we have this ester group with a carbonyl connected to the benzene ring. The isopropyl group, being an alkyl group, is going to be an ortho paradirector, so it will direct substitution ortho and para to itself, and the ester group being withdrawing by resonance is going to be a meta director. And so we've got two positions here that are actually what we would call reinforced positions, positions where electrophilic substitution is, is relatively preferred, directed to by both groups. But one is significantly less sterically crowded than the other. So this one here is relatively close to the isopropyl group. And so that's going to be disfavored. And the major product is going to come from substitution at the position that is para to the isopropyl group. Notice that, whoop, notice that that position is also meta to the ester group present in the starting benzene. So let me add whoop, these substituents first. We'll fill in the double bonds on the benzene ring and where substitution occurs at that meta position, we're gonna have the NO2 or nitro group. This is an example of nitration. And again, the key thing to recognize here is we've got substitution meta to the meta director and para to the ortho para director, which is a less hindered position than ortho to that ortho para director, which is also directed to by the meta directing ester group. Okay. In the second case, we've got a very different scenario in terms of the reagents used. Our reagent in the first step is sodium hydroxide, and that is a fantastic, that is a source of a fantastic nucleophile in the hydroxide anion. So here we're thinking about nucleophilic aromatic substitution rather than electrophilic aromatic substitution. This nucleophile, hydroxide, is going to displace a good leaving group in the substrate. Now the trick here is we've got two potential leaving groups in this substrate. We've got the fluorine, which could depart as fluoride, and we've got the bromine, which could depart as bromide. In SN2 and SN1 reactions, you're probably used to fluoride not being a good leaving group. Alkyl fluorides, for example, are terrible substrates for SN2 and SN1 reactions in general. However, thanks to the mechanism of nucleophilic aromatic substitution and the fact that this carbon is highly electrophilic because of that very electronegative fluorine atom, the trend actually flips in the case of nucleophilic aromatic substitution and aryl fluorides are fantastic electrophiles in SNAR reactions. And so nucleophilic substitution is going to occur preferentially at this carbon connected to the fluorine rather than the bromine. Certainly not the worst prediction to predict substitution at the bromine, and if we let the reaction run long enough and we've got enough hydroxide around, substitution will occur at that bromine-bearing carbon as well, but the initially formed product is gonna be derived from substitution at the fluorine-bearing carbon. Something else that argues for that carbon is it's ortho to the NO2 group, and so it's it's feeling the inductive withdrawing effect of the NO2 group more than the bromine bearing carbon, which is para to that group. And so it's kind of more electrophilic all around. This direct substitution to that particular leaving group position, leaving group bearing position. And we're gonna end up with the nucleophile OH minus connected there and a fluoride byproduct. So notice in the product now we have a new CO bond and fluoride has departed. That's nucleophilic aromatic substitution or what we would call S, oops, what we would call SN, 
AR. And the mechanism there is nucleophilic addition followed by beta elimination, which helps explain why these aryl fluorides, these electron deficient aryl fluorides, are great substrates for this reaction. The third case here, we're back to an electrophilic aromatic substitution with Cl2 and a Lewis acid, AlCl3, combining to produce essentially a chlorine electrophile. So we're going to chlorinate the aromatic ring. I'm actually going to take advantage of copy and paste for this because the alkyl groups that are already attached to the substrate are going to remain there. And we can think through directing effects like we did in the first case and notice that, okay, I've got a tert butyl group here that's going to direct ortho and para to itself. And I've got a methyl group here, and that too is going to direct ortho and para to itself. And it's worth pausing the video now and noticing that all three of these reinforced positions are structurally distinct. This would give rise to three different constitutionally isomeric aryl chloride products. And so we need to think carefully here to determine the major site of substitution, the major product. One that we can rule out initially is the position that's ortho to both the methyl and tert butyl groups. This is a relatively sterically crowded position since the tert butyl group is very large, but the methyl group is also providing some steric crowding to that position. So that one's out. The tert butyl group also sterically shields the, this position that's ortho to itself. This group is very large and it's going to very much slow the attack of electrophiles at these ortho carbons to the tert butyl group. And so this leaves the position that's para to the tert butyl group and ortho to the methyl group as the major site of substitution. So our product's going to have a new carbon chlorine bond at that position. So it's an example of a reinforced position where a steric effect, the different spatial environments of the three positions, is what gives rise to this as the major product. Here we're given conditions for an electrophilic aromatic substitution, specifically an electrophilic sulfonation with SO3 and H2SO4, and we're asked to draw the major arenium ion intermediate. Let's talk a little bit about what we mean by arenium ion, first of all. Generally, in electrophilic aromatic substitution, there is a two-step mechanism that takes place after generation of the active electrophile E+. In the first step, the aromatic ring coordinates to E+, or you, we could say there's an electrophilic attack on the benzene ring. Benzene donates a pair of pi electrons to E+, and we get a new carbon E bond. This leaves behind, or leaves, or forms, we might say, a cationic intermediate that looks something like this. There's positive charge at the carbon involved in the double bond that did not form a bond to E, and the two remaining double bonds of the benzene ring are still there. So this is specifically a cyclohexyl cation, but it is a cyclohexadienyl cation with a conjugated system involving five atoms right here in delocalization of that positive charge and a, ter a uh, tetrahedral carbon where E coordinated. This is exactly what we mean by an arenium ion. It's the loss of a proton from the arenium ion that gives rise to the final product in the EAS reactions. So we're looking for a structure in here with this general pattern, but the trick here is if there's already a substituent on the benzene ring, for example, some R group in some position, we need to think about directing effects as well. We need to notice, for example, that the cyano group, this is going to be a meta director. And so the SO3H group, which these conditions will add, should be positioned meta to the cyano group. So one way we can go about doing this is to actually potentially draw the final product first and then back into the arenium ion, right? So if we recognize, okay, cyano is a meta director, and so what I'm going to do is add SO3H, or really substitute SO3H for H, meta to that cyano group. This is the final product. It's not the arenium ion. If we compare this structure to this, we'll notice that the difference is there's a proton in the arenium ion that's missing from the final product. And so we can think about adding that proton back now to generate the arenium ion, right? We could imagine just protonating this double bond, putting an H on that same carbon where the SO3H is located, 
and that leaves a positive charge here. And of course, there are several resonance forms of the uranium ion, all of which are valid to draw. And I encourage you to pause the video and try to draw a couple of additional resonance forms that highlight the delocalization of this positive charge in the uranium ion. And here, all of those are correct. They're all valid resonance forms of the structure that we see here. Finally, in this question, we're asked to design a synthesis of this tri-substituted benzene from benzene itself. And this one's a little bit tricky if we think about directing relationships in the final target. For instance, this nitro group is para to this alkyl group right here. And so we wouldn't want to nitrate at the earliest stage because that would make it impossible to get an alkyl group in that position since additional reactions are going to occur meta to the nitro group since it's a meta director. We also should notice that we have a bromine that is meta to this alkyl group, and so alkylating at an early stage seems problematic as well, since if we put an alkyl group on, well, that's going to direct substitution ortho and para to the alkyl group and not in a meta position. So we need to be a little bit clever about how we do this. One thing we can notice in the final target is that the bromine is donating by resonance in an ortho para director, and the alkyl group is also donating by resonance in an ortho para director. So this position where the nitro group is located is para to the ethyl group and ortho to the bromine. So it's a reinforced position, meaning we can work backwards to a benzene that simply does not have the nitro group, and rest assured that nitration is going to occur at this desired position. And so this is worth reflecting on for a second that we have ortho to a bromine and para to an ethyl group. This is the position where we want the nitro group to go on. And so we know that that nitration at this stage in the synthesis, reagents for that are going to be HNO3 and sulfuric acid, H2SO4, nitration will occur selectively at that position. And we may have some nitration at this position as well, but we can separate the two products and just carry this product forward since that's our target and rest assured that we're doing a good enough job is how I would put it. All right, now we reach kind of a tricky crossroads though, right? Because the bromine and the ethyl group are meta to each other, but each of them on their own is an ortho para director. So, for example, I can't work backwards to bromobenzene because if I tried to ethylate bromobenzene with a, like a friedel crafts reaction, well, that would lead to installation of the ethyl group ortho or para to the bromine, not meta, where we need it. But here we can take advantage of a functional group manipulation of the ethyl side chain to work it back to a meta director. And this is going to allow us to install the bromine strategically using that meta director. And so what I'm talking about here is we can think about working backwards the ethyl group to an acetyl group. And we know how to accomplish this conversion of the acetyl group into an ethyl group. This is a reduction process since we're going from two carbon oxygen bonds to two carbon hydrogen bonds. And this reduction can be accomplished using Clemenson or Wolf-Kishner conditions. And the vast majority of what I saw used Clemenson reduction conditions, zinc mercury amalgam, and HCl as the source of protons for those new CH bonds. So we can do this. And the reason this is helpful is, well, now we can work backwards recognizing that, OK, oh, let me back up here and do a little bit of erasing. Now I have in this target a meta director with a bromine positioned meta to that group. So I can work backwards to the starting material without the bromine and rest assured that this bromination is going to work as desired. Right? I'm going to be able to install a bromine meta to that carbonyl group through a bromination reaction. The directing effect works. So I can add Br2 and, for example, just Fe here, forming FeBr3 in situ via a reduction uh, and a redox reaction, right? Or FeBr3 or 
ALCL3, your Lewis, your Lewis acid of choice. And this gets us selectively to this meta-substituted uh, acetophenone, which is quite nice. All right, and we're almost done. All we need to do now is work the acetylbenzene or acetophenone back to benzene itself. And in the forward direction, we would do this through a Friedel-Crafts acylation process, where we would use the corresponding acyl chloride, acetyl chloride in this case, in conjunction with AlCl3 as a Lewis acid, and that will install this one nice acetyl group on the benzene ring, and now there's no directing issue since we're starting with completely unsubstituted benzene. So to summarize here, we start by installing that acetyl group. That's a meta director. So a subsequent bromination is going to occur selectively at the meta position. Now we need to flip that to an ortho para director to get this reinforcing effect where we want the nitro group to end up. So we use Clemenson reduction to reduce the acetyl group to an ethyl group. And then we can nitrate and nitration will occur to a large extent at this position, which is directed to by both the bromine and ethyl substituents. And we arrive at our target, this tri-substituted nitrobenzene.